2021, the Cumbria and Toltec celebrated its 50th year of operation by throwing the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup. This event became one of the largest gatherings of pre-20th century steam locomotives in operation since the steam era. The two oldest, Baldwin-built wood burners Eureka and Palisade No. 4, the Eureka, and Carson and Tahoe Lumber and Fluming Companies Glenbrook, both built in 1875. The newest ones, both built for the Florence and Cripple Creek, were the number three, the Elkton, which became Denver and Rio Grande, number 425, more famously known as the Denver and Rio Grande Western, 315, and the number 20, the Portland was built in 1899 and also became more famous after its disposition to the Rio Grande Southern, where it was also rostered under the same number. For more on this locomotive, check out my video about the RGS-20 I posted earlier with a link in the description. Finally, in the spot between the two sets of locomotives was Denver and Rio Grande number 168, a 460 like number 20, but built 16 years earlier in 1883. This passenger locomotive, built by Baldwin, was retired in 1938 by the Rio Grande and placed on display in downtown Colorado Springs until removed from the park in 2016. From there it was moved to Ant Nito, the eastern terminus of the Cumbres and Toltec, where it was restored with completion in 2020. As part of the Victorian Roundup, it made multiple trips across the line, culminating in the final run of the event an overnight train that would take it and the historic passenger train over the pass at night, resulting in the first overnight revenue passenger train on this portion of the narrow gauge in nearly a century. This video features footage from Saturday, August 28th, with an out and back trip to Cumbres and the Chama to Antonio trip the next day on the 29th. Both days of this footage will be presented here as a single trip up the mountain. On the Saturday trip, a portion of the 168's valve gear came apart, which would result in Railroad General Manager Stathi Pappas, Jason Sipchinski, the Chief Mechanical Officer of the Kentucky Steam Heritage Corporation, and other employees of the Cumbres and Toltec working feverishly to get the 168 rolling again for the event. Finally, well after dark, the 168 rolled from the engine house under her own power before hooking onto the passenger train. A helper locomotive would be needed, and 315 in its Denver and Rio Grande number 425 incarnation would be tucked behind the 168 to the summit. Let's crank the sensitivity of Nikon Z6 and put on some fast lenses as we follow this first in a nearly 100 years experience.
We first catch the train outside of yard limits at Lake Lobato, leaving the Narrows. Heading up above Lobato, we catch the train at Dalton as lighting provided by Paul Springowski illuminates the scene. Jumping ahead, we hit the S-curve between the second crossing and Cresco. Needing water, we catch the locomotive stopping at Cresco.
With the cisterns topped off, the train blasts over the crossing at Coxo, in the valley below Windy Point and Coombrays. Arriving at the summit, the train rounds the final curves of Windy Point and pulls next to the standpipe adjacent to the Kumbay section lines. The second locomotive no longer needed, the 425 is cut out of the consist and the 168 will pull the train into Antonito, where it will perform sunrise runbys at Hangman's Trestle. But we will leave it here as we ourselves head into the night for other points.
You're still here? It's over. Go home. Oh, you already are home. All right, well, go ahead and check out one of these other videos here. Uh, helps support the channel. And if you haven't already, make sure you uh, click subscribe so you can keep going for more content like this. Thank you.